Welcome to How To, a quality digest series for quality control and quality assurance specialists who need quick instruction on how to get something done. This episode is sponsored by Mitutoyo. And now Craig Howell of CPM Labs will show us how to use a Digimatic indicator. Go ahead, Craig. Hi, this is a Mitutoyo Digimatic indicator. It's, it also calculates. It has different functions. It'll function as a normal indicator, but it also will do calculations, which is very handy. And when you, when you say calculations, what do you mean? Uh, calculations you would use if you're measuring chamfer or over a ball or two to different, different features that normally have engineering formulas associated with them. They're programmed right in here so you can set them up and not have to do any after the fact. So, so normally what you would, if you didn't have that f capability, you would take a measurement with an, with an indicator and then you'd Break have out to do your some slide sort ruler. of your slide rule and do some fancy math in order to, to calculate chamfer or whatever. Right? Correct. Okay. Where this can be be programmed in. You also can use it as a regular indicator and it has a number of different features. I'd like to go over some of them. Okay, great. One of the, the first ones is the resolution. Right now we were set up for a 50 millionth resolution, which means each digit or each division is zero or five. But you can also reset that. We'll go to the menu structure. And we'll work our way down. It's on the side here. Now we're at resolution. When you choose that, you can change the resolution down to 20 millionths of an inch or even down to 10 millionths of an inch. For an indicator to measure 10 millionths of an inch is phenomenal. You can also go coarser, which is less digits, which sometimes more digits is not helping the issue. It can complicate things. So you can set it to a number of different resolutions, 12 of them. But the base, base one Mitt Tutorial recommends is 50 millionths of an inch. And the accuracy of this is 1 10 thousandth, which is two divisions or two digits. Or two digits, okay. So one of the first things we'll show how to do is just measure different heights by, we'll use gauge blocks to simulate. Right now we're zeroed. And I notice you're using uh, gloves, what are those for? Well the gloves will keep the oils from my hands from touching the metal gauge blocks. At normal lab use we would use white cotton gloves to also for heat okay. to, to keep our 98.6 from touching a 68 degree item or we'd use tongs. Okay. Uh, under the lights here in the studio, some of the numbers may not turn out to be perfectly linear because of the heat. Everything is heating up and expanding, but right. let's give it a shot. So the first thing we'll do is we'll put a 50 thousandths gauge block underneath, and I'm showing about a tenth and a half I, 05015. Okay. Not uncommon for it to grow 15. Sure, yeah. In, in this sort of thing. There's and about we, 150 in here, so. <laughs> <laughs> we could keep going up with different size gauge blocks. I'll just go right up to the top to a one inch to show that, you know, this, these would be basic type of step height. And here we have one, one inch, two tenths. So it, it's about a linearity of one division, okay. which would be great to have one inch with one division worth of, of linearity. That's fantastic. Now, keeping with our theme of how do you do stuff, okay. let's go ahead and, and measure a step height and show how it's actually done in practice. Now, this, this display will rotate. It'll rotate almost a full circle, which is fantastic. And actually, while you're on the display, let, let's talk about a couple things I noticed. I noticed there's a, some sort of a, a display or, or arc going across the top. What is that? Correct. That's, that's the bar, analog bar scale, which when you're doing run out, Looking at digits alone do not tell the story. You would actually want to see the high and the low, like the old dial indicator. You could tell when you had the high to stop, or if you're looking for the low. This does this simulates that. Yeah, it's easier than looking at numbers sometimes. You mm -hmm. want to actually, uh, an analog display is, is kind of nice. Yeah. It's great, it's, it's invaluable. You, you can't really do run out just numerically. So let's go ahead and we'll plop it here. We'll zero it out on here and we'll measure, let's say this was our base, our zero reference surface. We'll measure up to the top of this and we're measuring right at about, looks like 220 thousandths and one tenths, 0.22010. Now earlier you asked, well, how is that in relation to the other side? Let's find out. We'll go ahead and zero it on the other side. And my, all my rotating around tends to change things, so we'll re-zero it, and we'll go back up. 
This measures 21990. It's a full 10, one ten thousandth of an inch off. Oh, man. <sighs> what machine shop did you get that from? Oh, boy. <laughs> Actually, we, we had this provided by one of our best machine shops in the area, Ruxco, down in Diamond Springs. Okay. They were kind enough to let us borrow this for the application. When we need things done right, that's where that, we That's go. where you go. And some of the other things it can do when you're measuring runout, say that you, you had a round piece and you were measuring runout in a fixture, you can do the high, the low, and the total run out. Okay. Now the high is great for finding the, on an outside feature the highest portion of it, and the low is great for an inside feature, you're always wanting the minimum. And it normally, it will, the rate that it stores at is about 10 times per second. It has a feature that you can, pro, you can turn on which will actually do 50 samples per second, 20 okay. millisecond between them. Okay. So you can really nail in the peaks. Now, I mean, a thought occurs to me here is you have this cylindrical part. If you wanted to measure the height of that cylindrical part and be sure that you were exactly on the top, you could do some sort of peak, you could uh, do a peak, peak measurement, right? And Correct. it would just, whatever the highest point you measured as you ran that You'd cylindrical stop. part, it, it would tell you what that was. Right. Okay. Either you would stop or you could store that, that information. Okay. So basically, that's some of the features. I can't really show you the calculated features. You need dedicated fixtures. But if it's going to be in a fixture for doing angle, taper, things of that nature, you can't beat this. Okay. All right. Thanks, Craig. Uh, and thanks to Minutoyo for sponsoring this episode and providing the Digimatic Indicator. Thanks to all of you for watching, and we will see you at the next How To. As the world's largest provider of measurement and inspection solutions, Minutoyo America Corporation offers a complete selection of machines, sensors, systems, and services with a line encompassing CMMs, vision, form, precision tools and instruments, and metrology data management software. Minutoyo's nationwide network of metrology centers provides application, calibration, service, repair, and educational programs.